Dr. Libman, thank you and welcome again. Dr. Libman is the Vice Chair of Neurology at LIJ Medical Center, Chief of Vascular Neurology, and the Professor of Neurology at the Zucker School of Medicine, Hofstra Northwell. Welcome again, and we're always thrilled to have your wisdom and some of the new information that you can bring to us. So I understand that you'd like to speak to us about eye stroke. First of all, I don't even know how I would identify eye stroke. So if you could tell us maybe what the symptoms are and what news you have for us. Thank you very much, Ginny, and nice to see you again. And thank you for having me. And uh, yes, so I would like to introduce a very much related but slightly different concept when it comes to stroke. Um, so first of all, it's important to know that the most important part of the eye, which neurologists consider the most important, is the retina. And of course, there are many other parts of the eye um, and the lens and all kinds of other cornea. But for the stroke neurologist, the most important part of the eye is the retina. Why? Because it so happens that the retina is more or less an extension of the brain. And um, the uh, retina goes to the optic nerve and the optic nerve goes to the brain. The optic nerve is basically exactly like the like the brain and it goes from your retina all the way back to your brain but it's really starting kind of as the brain it's the same type of substance the same kind of nerves that are in the brain and guess what the retina has the same blood supply as the brain so that the majority of the blood supply to the brain comes from the carotid artery and that supplies very large amounts of the brain and then when we deal with strokes we're often dealing with either the carotid artery itself or some branch of the carotid artery within the head that gets that is blocked and that causes the typical stroke a brain stroke well after the carotid artery enters the head a small branch comes off and supplies the retina so the blood supply to the retina is the same as the blood supply to the brain and anything that causes a blockage in the blood supply to the brain can cause a blockage in the blood supply to the retina. And just as an example, if you have hardening of the arteries of the carotid artery, a plaque or a clot can break off from the carotid artery, travel into that small blood vessel through the carotid artery and go to the retina, block off the blood supply, the retina stops working or dies. If you happen to have a condition like atrial fibrillation or some other heart condition, a clot can break off from the heart travel up to the carotid artery, and again, instead of going up to the brain, make a little turn, go into one of the smaller blood vessels that supplies the retina, and then you have basically what we could refer to as an eye stroke. And uh, the technical term for the strokes we're talking about due to blockage, as you know, is an infarct. And if it, uh, so it's a cerebral infarction is a stroke due to blockage in the blood supply to the brain. Retinal infarction is a stroke of the retina with the same kind of damage as occurs to the brain due to a blockage in the blood supply to the retina. And then you say, well, how does it present? Well, basically it presents as relating to what the eye does. The eye allows us to see. So what a retinal or an eye stroke is, is a sudden loss of vision in one eye. Now, you can lose vision when you have strokes in the brain, particularly in the back part of the brain. That's where vision is, but it's not in one eye. It's actually partially in both eyes. So you might lose vision off to one side, for example, off to my left in my left eye and in my right eye, loss of vision off to one side, but both eyes are still working in the other direction to my right. When you get a blockage in the blood supply to the eye or to the retina, you will suddenly completely lose vision in that eye and basically go blind in that eye. And that is what's known as the term, I'll just give you the technical term just so you'll have it, central retinal artery occlusion. Why? Because the name of that little branch from the carotid artery, that little tiny artery that supplies the retina is called the central retinal artery, central artery that supplies the retina. 
and um, occlusion is occlusion, as we always get when we talk about strokes due to blockage. And the natural history, meaning the natural course of events, when you have a central retinal artery occlusion, an eye stroke, is that you go blind in that eye and 80 to 90% of people, no matter what you do with whatever conventional treatment we have, 80 to 90% of those patients will remain severely impaired, if not completely blind in that eye. Basically, 80 to 90% of patients who have a retinal stroke, an eye stroke, never regain vision better than 2400. So you talk about 2020 is perfect vision, 2040, 2060, 2080. Well, by that point, you're really getting into a little bit of trouble and you need to have glasses and this and that. Now, 2400 is the best, is the best that the majority of those patients ever regain. And many patients remain totally blind in that eye. There has been no effective treatment. So, of course, both eye doctors and stroke neurologists have been interested for years and years and years since this is kind of analogous to a brain stroke. It's basically the same idea, a blockage in the blood supply, this time to the retina instead of to the brain. But it's basically the same mechanisms, the same things are happening. If we can treat patients with brain strokes effectively using IV treatments like IV TPA or IV tenecteplase, um, and if we can treat patients effectively with catheters that go in through the major blood vessels up through the carotid artery and then treat the patient with a catheter going into their heads, well, if we can do that for brain strokes, why can't we do it for eye strokes? And um, so over a number of years now, there have been studies that have strongly suggested similarly to regular stroke, if you suddenly lose the vision in one eye due to a central retinal artery occlusion, that blood vessel becomes blocked, that's supplying your retina in the eye, and you, could, you can get to the hospital very quickly, you can be treated within four and a half hours, just as we do for brain strokes, with IV TPA or IV tenecteplase, and those patients tend to do better than if they are not treated. Is it a miracle cure and does everybody get better? No, the answer is no. But do far more patients improve with IV TPA or IV tenecteplase within four and a half hours compared to patients who are not being treated? Almost definitely yes. So it may not be a miracle cure, but it could make the difference between almost certainty remaining blind in one eye and regaining, if not 100% of vision, regaining a significant amount of vision so that you can function again. That's number one. Now, some patients are not going to come in within four and a half hours, and they're not going to be eligible for IV treatments exactly analogous to the time frames we used for regular strokes, brain strokes, so they can't be treated intravenously. And some patients are going to come in within four and a half hours, be treated with IV TPA or IV tenecteplase, and maybe they don't get better. Not everybody's going to get better. For those patients, we now have information based on studies that if you are within 15 hours, and it just kind of sounds like an arbitrary number, it's just that one of the bigger studies that looked at central retinal artery occlusion, eye strokes, used a 15 hour time window and showed that if you can go in there with a catheter, and here it's a little bit of a variation compared to what we've talked about in other, um, in other interviews, where instead of there may not be a big clot to pull out because this blockage is in this tiny, tiny, almost microscopic blood vessel that's going to the eye. That's the central retinal artery. So there's no major clot to pull out. It's not one of these mechanical clot retrieval type of procedures, but what it is is going in there with a catheter into the carotid artery and then injecting TPA 
or to neck to place, basically a clot buster, not mechanically pulling out a clot, but injecting it directly into the blood vessels that ultimately go and supply the eye and breaking up the blood clot. And it looks like there's pretty good evidence that if you can do that within 15 hours, either because the pa patient, let's say, didn't respond fully, even if they came in within four and a half hours and they got their intravenous TPA or their intravenous tenecteplase, or they come in at six hours or nine hours or 12 hours or something like that, fine, they're no longer eligible for the intravenous treatment, but you can go in with a catheter, inject the same medicine, basically, very small quantities, it doesn't have to be a big dose. It can be a very small quantity because when you inject it through a vein, it has to circulate through your whole body, basically, and then get up to where the blockage is. When you go in with a catheter, you're injecting it directly, almost directly where the blockage is, where the clot is in this tiny, tiny blood vessel, supplying the retina, and you can break up that clot and patients get better. Neither of these treatments is a miracle cure. Um, there haven't been the huge randomized trials done yet rather smaller trials and just series of patients who come in and they get treated and you can see they're doing so much better than we know they would otherwise do because the, because the natural course of this disease is horrible and yet here we're showing 40 50 percent of patients regaining their vision 60 percent of patients regaining their vision whereas before it was maybe 10 percent something like that so this is the data that we now have available and we are starting in our hospitals to uh, treat these patients quite routinely. So I'm talking about Northwell Health now, and particularly at North Shore University Hospital, we've developed a protocol where patients come in. Of course, they have to be diagnosed. We usually need collaboration and the help of our ophthalmology colleagues to make the correct diagnosis that this is in fact uh, blockage in the blood supply, central retinal artery occlusion. And once we have that diagnosis pinned down, we treat them as quickly as we can, either with IV, clot buster, and or with the catheter-based injecting the clot buster directly into the blood vessels that go to the eye. And um, we have treated um, several patients this way, actually, just in the last few months with remarkable results. Actually, two patients regaining most of their vision, of uh, four patients, Two patients regained most, if not all, of their vision. One patient partially regained his vision, and one patient did not change. So that's um, basically three quarters of the patients making some improvement or excellent improvement compared to 90% of patients not getting better at all when they're not treated this way um, because there is no other effective treatment. So we're quite excited about it. Um, not all hospitals are doing this. Um, you could argue that we need more trials and more evidence, but the American Heart Association in the national guidelines, which are published uh, every year, every two years, whatever, they put them out periodically, has endorsed this treatment. Now they know that not all hospitals are capable of doing it and the really big randomized trials are not out there yet. So the American Heart Association basically says, look, we think this tre these treatments help. If you have the resources and the capacity by all means, treat patients who have eye strokes in a similar way to the way we treat patients who have brain strokes because it seems to work. And um, so with that endorsement by the American Heart Association, we felt it was the right thing to do. And we are now treating these patients. And I believe it's going to become more and more widespread as more data and more studies become available. But in the meantime, we don't want to waste time and have patients come in with blindness in one eye and say to them, well, you know, we haven't had the one study with, uh, you know, 1,500 patients. So, um, therefore, we're not going to treat you because, you know, what the expression is, um, don't let the perfect or don't let the very, very good be the enemy of the good. Don't wait to have perfection while patients are losing their vision when it looks pretty clear that we have a treatment that can help them. That's our philosophy. So we're now treating um, as many patients as we can with eye strokes, again, the technical term, central retinal artery occlusion. It, that's absolutely fascinating, and I'm really happy that that kind of progress is being made. Um, when you talk about looking at the retinas, I know the fibromuscular dysplasia that I have, when I have my, my uh, Dopplers done every year, I, they do an intracranial, and 
through my eyeballs, which is very odd, but is that what they're looking for? They're looking at the retinal, retinal yeah. artery? Yeah, actually the answer is yes and no. The <laughs> central retinal artery is too small to be seen by any test. It's virtually microscopic, Jenny. So when we do the transcranial Doppler, what we're looking at is the, the blood vessel that is a little larger that gives off the central retinal artery. It's called the ophthalmic artery, ophthalmic, ophthalmology, eye. It comes off the carotid artery, and then it goes in this way towards the retina. And as it approaches the retina, it gives off this tiny, tiny, tiny blood vessel called the central retinal artery that directly supplies the, ret the retina. But when um, Albert, whom we all know, I can just say his first name, who's such an expert at doing transcranial Dopplers, what he's looking at, because sometimes people do develop hardening of the arteries, of even that small blood vessel called the ophthalmic artery, not as tiny as the central retinal artery. No, we just can't see that with any test. But we want to know if you're, if you or anybody is developing hardening of the arteries of that eye supplying artery called the ophthalmic artery that gives off the central retinal artery. When our colleagues go in with catheters into the carotid artery, they can go right into that blood vessel, the ophthalmic artery. They can't go into the central retinal artery; it's too small. But once they're in that ophthalmic artery, inject tenecteplase, small amounts, or inject TPA, very small amounts, much less than we use when we give it through a vein, and it goes straight into that microscopic blood vessel supplying the retina and helps to open it up. Thank you so much. Thank you again for participating. This is the ninth telethon that we've done, and your, your wisdom is always so welcome. Thank you so much, Dr. Lippmann. My pleasure as usual. It's always a pleasure to see you and I, I love to help in any way that I can. Thank you.